Dr. Raglan, Dean of Zombie Hunter University. This is the second in a series of lectures on the scientific minimalist approach to dead frontier weapons. Today's topic is Malay weapons. First, let's go over a few basics common to all Malay weapons. Malay weapons strike or stab zombies. All Malay weapons need points added to the critical stat in order to deliver critical hits, which inflict five times as much damage as ordinary hits. Some low-level melee weapons are high critical chance, which means they need 112 stat points in critical hit to be optimized. Most melee weapons are very high critical chance, needing only 80 points in critical hit. Either way, when optimized, melee weapons will deliver critical hits 80% of the time. There are advantages and disadvantages to using melee weapons. There are two main disadvantages to melee. Malay weapons must be used up close, this creates vulnerability. Malay weapons tend to lag behind other weapons in firepower. For example, the 100 proficiency battle axe has almost exactly the same damage per hit as the 40 proficiency M1 Garand rifle. What then are the advantages? Malay is silent. It can kill a zombie without attracting the attention of other zombies. This makes it very effective for looting. Malay requires no ammunition. Students need not go broke purchasing expensive ammo, nor worry about running out of bullets while looting the streets of Fairview. Malay requires only one stat for optimization, critical chance. There is no need for points in strength, accuracy, or reloading. Therefore, it is easier for freshman students to optimize the weapon quickly. Malay does not reload. It strikes continuously. This means there is no window of vulnerability when a zombie can attack while your weapon pauses to reload. There are two types of melee weapons. Blades and blunts strike once per second, have a longer reach, and tend to deliver more damage per hit than knives of equivalent proficiency. Knives strike 1.5 times per second, have a shorter reach, and tend to deliver more damage per second because of their faster striking speed. There is one melee weapon that strikes twice per second, the titanium blades, but this is an expensive, unique item available only in the credit shop and out of reach to starving students, so we will ignore it in this lecture. In our previous lecture, we mentioned the weapon's proficiency paradox. Weapons with higher proficiency are not always better. Imagine you are trying to kill a zombie with 100 health points. Your weapon with 50 damage points takes two hits to do this job, so you upgrade to a new weapon that inflicts 75 damage points. Unfortunately, the new weapon still takes two hits to kill a zombie. The extra damage does no good in this example. Students should stick with recommended weapons, upgrading only when a weapon represents a significant improvement. Our recommendations are based on the escalating dangers encountered as students progress through Dead Frontier. The city of Fairview is divided into zones. Each zone is inhabited by certain species of zombies. We favor weapons adequate to handle threats in each zone. The blue zones around Nastia's holdout are inhabited by so-called normal zombies that are relatively weak. None has a health rating over 35 points. That is why we recommend the Iron Pipe. This 20 proficiency weapon is a blunt instrument that strikes once per second, delivering 35 damage points with a critical hit. This means it can kill every zombie in the blue zones with a single blow, assuming each blow is critical. Other melee weapons deliver more damage per hit, but they won't kill the zombies any deader. The drawback of the iron pipe is that it is a high critical chance weapon, which needs 112 points in the critical stat to deliver the maximum percentage of critical hits. Freshman students are not likely to achieve this during their time in the blue zones. The Chris is a 50 proficiency knife that strikes 1.5 times per second, delivering the same damage per hit as an iron pipe. The Chris has a faster striking speed, so it will kill swarms of zombies faster. The disadvantage is that its shorter reach requires better dodging skills. Green zones are inhabited by zombies that the iron pipe and the Chris cannot kill with a single blow. In fact, it would take three critical hits to kill blood dogs and burned and irradiated zombies. The odds of getting three critical hits in a row is 54%, which means it can actually require four or five blows to neutralize these threats. Therefore, we recommend equipping weapons that can kill the local zombies with two critical hits. The shovel is a 50 proficiency blunt instrument that strikes once per second. It will kill all zombies in the green zones with two critical hits. Also, the shovel is very high critical chance, so beginning students are more likely to have the weapon nearly optimized. 
Another option in the green zone is the trench knife, a 60 proficiency weapon with very high critical chance that strikes 1.5 times per second. Because of its faster striking speed, the trench knife can deliver two critical hits needed to kill burned and irradiated male zombies faster than a shovel. Unfortunately, the trench knife takes three hits to kill blood dogs, which have more health points than burned and irradiated zombies. Though the trench knife strikes faster, the shovel can deliver two critical hits before the trench knife can deliver three. Since blood dogs are faster and more dangerous threat, we prefer the shovel to the trench knife in most circumstances. This is a perfect example of the weapon proficiency paradox mentioned above. The 50 proficiency shovel will kill blood dogs faster than the 60 proficiency trench knife. In yellow zones, students will encounter sirens for the first time. Although sirens do not attack directly, their screeching can trigger massive swarms. To prevent this, one should kill sirens on sight, preferably with a single blow. The first melee weapon capable of doing this is the saber. This 80 proficiency blade with a very high critical chance strikes once per second, delivering 77 damage points with a critical hit. This is enough to one hit kill not only sirens, but also burned and irradiated female zombies, which have 70 health points. The saber will not one crit kill burned and irradiated males with 80 health points, nor blood dogs with 100 health points. However, like the shovel, the saber will reliably kill these zombies with two blows, 64% chance of two consecutive critical hits. Note, the 90 proficiency sledgehammer is identical to the saber in performance, the only difference is cosmetic. The battle axe and the katana are identical weapons except in appearance. Both are 100 proficiency, very high critical chance, they strike once per second. They represent a substantial improvement over the saber, able to one crit kill burned and irradiated male zombies. They also kill bones, brute sleepers, and tendrils with fewer critical hits, which makes looting in yellow zones considerably easier. The 110 proficiency Nodachi is the first melee weapon that can exterminate blood dogs with a single critical hit. This means that the Nodachi can kill every normal or commonly seen zombie in the blue, green, and yellow zones. It also kills mutants, such as bones, reapers, brutes, leapers, and spiders, with fewer critical hits. Careful students are virtually invulnerable using this weapon in the orange zones. The Nodachi is a very high critical chance blade that strikes once per second, delivering 107 damage points per critical hit. This is enough to make the weapon useful in the red and black zones, where it outperforms the battle axe and the katana against flesh hounds and against black and irradiated long arms. When students move into the red and black zones farther east, they will encounter common zombies that are almost as resilient as the mutant species found in the orange zones. Many of them are too powerful to be killed with a single blow from even the most powerful melee weapon. Nevertheless, there are options that will help keep students safe in these dangerous environs. The spiker is the first commonly available melee weapon that can kill some weaker zombies with a non-critical hit. A guaranteed one-hit kill is useful when looting silently. The spiker's other advantage is that it can kill a long arm, a dangerous species that first appears in red zones, with a combination of one critical hit and one non-critical hit. Mathematically, this works out to a 96% probability of killing a long arm with two hits. Compare this to the 64% probability of killing a long arm with two critical hits from a Nodachi. The spiker also uses fewer critical hits to kill tendrils, brutes, and leapers, which proliferate in red and black zones. The dual blade offers the highest damage per hit of any melee weapon in the game, excluding limited edition and unique items. It kills spiders with only two critical hits, but its main advantage over the spiker is that it can kill long arms with a single critical hit and kill rumblers with one critical and one non-critical. Additionally, the dual blade can kill fat female zombies with a non-critical hit, which makes it easier to clear these small targets out of the way to focus on bigger game. The dual blade is a 120 proficiency, very high critical chance blade that strikes once per second. Its effectiveness in red zones is undeniable. Though it is less overpowering in the black zones, it still works better than any other melee that most students will be able to equip. Before wrapping up, I want to say a brief word about boss hunting. Melee can be used for hunting boss zombies. It is very effective and economical for defeating flaming zombies and titans. It can be used against mothers, but these zombies explode upon death, so students should retreat to kill the target with a bullet from a safe distance. Melee is riskier against wraiths and giant spiders, but excellent dodging skills and or speed enhancement drugs will increase chances of success. 
We should note that against boss zombies, any increase in damage per second will pay off. For example, while upgrading from a shovel to a trench knife will not improve odds against a blood dog, it will provide an edge against a flaming zombie. Students hunting bigger games should use a saber against titans and at least a battle axe against anything more dangerous. As students encounter threats in the black zones and white zones farther east, melee may seem less useful. True, it no longer works on its own against exploding targets such as bloats and irradiated rumblers. However, it remains a viable part of a critical build, allowing students to silently loot dangerous areas while attracting a minimum of attention. That concludes today's lecture on melee weapons. We will return with a lecture on chainsaws. Mm -hmm.